So how does that set the context for the cuts we see now? Yeah, um, you know, hiring has certainly ballooned. I think it's clear across tech uh, coming, you know, out of the pandemic, everyone believed a lot of those trends were durable, sustainable, and, and kind of hired and planned accordingly. Um, you know, what we've seen from, from Meta and certainly something investors have been long been asking for is trimming, um, you know, some of those overhires. Uh, same thing happening right now with Amazon as, you know, ambitions kind of get reined in. You know, and the last one standing that, that really hasn't kind of gone through of least big tech on the layoff side is Google. You know, and Google hired a record amount of people, um, you know, these last two quarters, up to 12,500 new hires this past quarter alone. And so they've kind of gone, you know, in the opposite direction at the moment, um, just in terms of the number of new people that they've brought in. My argument, Mark, and tell me if you think this is right, is that these cuts are not based on bad times. They're based on times not turning out to be as good as people hoped uh, at the end of last year, really. And if we are indeed entering bad times, as some signals right now indicate, there might have to be further cuts, and investors should think about that. Yeah, I think that's absolutely fair, right? These are growth companies, or historically have been growth companies. And so, you know, they've always hired on this promise of, you know, future build out, future innovation, um, and effectively have kind of staffed up as such as the cost of capital has gone up, as top line growth has kind of disappeared. And the other kind of new wrinkle in this environment is that nobody's leaving. There's there's nowhere else to go. And so attrition's at probably record low levels for many of these companies. And so they're sitting here with a bunch of kind of headcount with a lot of initiatives uh, with a payback period probably beyond you know, the, the payback period, I think both investors and even internally, these companies are now looking for. Right. Um, Mark, I'm sure you saw the TCI letter to Alphabet uh, talking about making a number of the changes that you're yourself talking about. Um, in it, they talked about Waymo in its other bets category. They say that it has not justified its excessive investment and its losses should be reduced dramatically. Do you believe that Waymo hasn't justified its investment? Is it an important technology for Google to be leading in the years ahead? You know, Waymo is an interesting one and certainly one I think that gets a lot of visibility given the, the spend on that initiative alone. Um, you know, there's certainly competition in the space like Cruise that's kind of become commercial and gone to market. You know, I, I think even outside of the big bets, there's plenty of initiatives there that, you know, in a different environment, you could certainly understand why a company like Google built on disruption wants to ensure they continually evolve and disrupt. Um, you know, but even inside of the core business, you've got products and projects in there like Google Fiber. You know, do they need to be in the fiber mm -hmm. build-out business? Um, you know, that they're certainly putting quite a bit of money to work on. So then what do you think should be on the chopping block? I mean, there's obviously this risk that if Google scales back too much, they risk not being in on the next generation technologies. How do you rank Fiber versus Waymo versus Verily versus some of the other Stadia, which it did cut? Yeah, I think the one thing we've seen uh, from Google in particular is, uh, you know, there's even websites out there dedicated to the Google graveyard. So they've certainly got milestones and checks and balances that when something doesn't hit uh, a particular adoption curve or, you know, a return on investment curve, uh, you know, they, they shut it down like Stadia recently. Um, you know, what we have seen, though, is as they shut down some of these projects, they effectively keep the headcount and deploy them to other parts of the business. Uh, and in a different environment, you certainly have the right to do so. What I would imagine is going to happen is as they look at these initiatives, um, you know, they're going to shrink or, or steepen the requirements required to keep investment levels going. And I think the TCI letter, the current environment, what we've seen with peers, you know, if there was ever a time for them to get a little bit more serious on taking cost out or winding some of these initiatives down, uh, there's probably never been a time with more cover uh, than we have right now.